like to open the meeting at 6.04. And I'd like everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to read what we published in the, in the newspaper. Uh, the Worcester Telegram is at the legal ad. The Brookfield Zoning of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 6.30 Wednesday, July 19th in the Brookfield Town Hall, first floor. The purpose of this hearing is to consider a request from Clarence Snyder to appeal the decision by the Zoning Enforcement Officer regarding a special permit that was issued to John D. Holcraft for the property owned by him, 6 South Maple Street in Brookfield. The request asks the Board of Appeals to determine the special permit is no longer valid. This hearing is for an administrative appeal. The property is located in Business A District. Board, the announcement said the hearing was to start at 6.30. You are enjoined by law from starting it before then. I believe it was six close to the second. The first yeah, one. the first one was 6 o'clock. The second one is 6.30, the third one is 7. But this one, this does say... 90, 90, 99 Rice Corner is supposed to be first. 6. 6 o'clock. It does say so. Is this a day one? Yeah. Do we hope that? She's right. She is right. So, who is the... I just want to get this one over with. Easy to get. No, no, no. Where is it? Six o'clock. Oh, Rice Corner. Whoops. I apologize. Thank you, Sharon. My mistake. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, I'd like to open the hearing at six o five for a public hearing. Um, this is the newspaper ad. The Brookfield Zoning of Appeals will hold a public hearing at six eight p.m. Wednesday, July nineteenth, at two thousand and seventeen, the Brookfield Town Hall, first floor banquet room. The purpose of this hearing is to consider a request from John Mansfield, the owner of 99 Rice Corner Road, to appeal a decision by the Zoning Enforcement Officer regarding prohibitive use of his property. The hearing is for an administrative appeal. This property is located in the Rural Residential District. Mr. Mansfield, um, can we hear from you what your, do you have some? Can you, oh, okay. can, you both, can you both join us up here, please? Yes, please. Both of you, please? Mr. Mansfield, do you just want to represent him or do you want him to speak on his behalf? Um, if he wants to speak, he told me he would like to speak. At we some can come point, on up so. now, then. Yep. Yep. Are you going to speak or do you want me to speak? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In your name, sir. My name is Dale Kiley. I'm an attorney in the North Fork Field, and um, Mr. Mansfield has obtained me as his legal counsel on this matter. Um, so the um, the use regulation uh, says that it's excessively obnoxious hazardous, uh, and then it goes on to say open air storage of junk and salvage materials. So I, I guess we just like some clarification as to what uh, exactly what section you're coming under because in the bylaw there is no definition anywhere in the bylaw of what constitutes junk or salvage material. So if that's what you're looking to enforce on this, um, I'm just wondering who is going to, whose objective criteria uh, is going to define what junk is or salvage material is uh, to be removed from the property. Uh, so Mr. Chair, I'd like to invite Mr. Palmer up. Say your name is the one that made the decision. Welcome, sir. Are you opposed to Mr. Palmer answering that question? Absolutely not. Did you hear the question, Mr. Palmer? I, uh, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, I just want to go to the prohibited use of all districts. I think that's the uh, uh, section I was citing. Uh, all uses which are excessively obnoxious, hazardous, injurious to the neighborhood, or the property in the vicinity, all open air storage, junk, salvage material, 
and except, except as otherwise provided by this uh, bylaw, the collection, treatment, storage, burial of incineration waste, including those classified as low-level radiation waste and expressly prohibited in all zoning districts. Uh, I don't know if the board has able to go by the property, and if you guys, have you guys looked at it at all? I have. Yeah, very good. Uh, there is a tremendous amount, uh, number of boats, canoes, kayaks, um, just sitting there. It's, they've been there for 20, 25 years. Uh, I have pictures if you, have to, if you want to see them. Uh, I'm saying it's injurious to the neighborhood because it, it is bringing down the property value. So it's did, an eyesore. Did a neighbor call you or is this just arbitrarily? I've had numerous calls uh, anonymously uh, from people. Uh, they don't want to, they don't like leaving their names, which is fine. It's, they don't have to leave their names. So you were called there specifically to inspect what? Yes. To inspect what? To inspect that 99 Rice Corner Road. I gave him a warning. I gave him two months to clean up his area. He said he would. I gave him a second warning, advising him that he has 30 days to clean up his uh, property. He said he would. Uh, he failed to do so. I. I uh, instituted a fine of $25 per day just, uh, I think, a week or so ago. Uh, he's been given many warnings. He just refuses to clean up this property. He was not burning on the property? Burning? Was it? No burning. I didn't see any burning. Just a lot of debris and open air storage. So basically, it's, it's the opinion of what junk is and his representative is claiming we have no definition of junk. Well, if something is laid outside for 25 years, it's going to be junk. Now, Mr. Mansfield represents that all those boats are uh, usable, they've been used. Uh, the fact that they're in the same place as being stored for 25 years doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't been used occasionally for their intended purpose. All of them float, all of them are usable, all of them are uh, have value. So uh, the other thing I would like to point out to um, the board is the discrepancy in your bylaw between uh, the use regulation, the prohibited uses that um, Mr. Thomo just um, read to you. That was your, do you have a current copy of the bylaws? I have the current, the best says last amended June 2014. Is that? Is that? I, I got that from your uh, yes. website, so I would assume. Um, in section C, the environmental controls and districts, uh, uh, number one, subparagraph C, Open air storage areas shall be screened from any adjacent residence or public way by planting or fences. Junk, trash, or debris shall be confined out of sight. So in the first section you're saying open air storage is absolutely prohibited. And in this section you're saying you can use open air storage provided that it's screened. And I have photographs of the residence which shows that the boats and canoes uh, are behind fencing. Can the board see those? Oh, absolutely. Uh, some are visible above the fence line, but they're canoes in the tubs of the boat, so uh, it's not really uh, what most people would consider trash or junk or obnoxious material. Thank you. Can I see them? Absolutely. I'm going to have to show you uh, photos that I've taken. Do you have them on you? Yeah, they're in the office. I'll be right back. Maybe from a different perspective. My wife, my wife grew up in this house. Doesn't look the same. My house doesn't look the same since I built it either. Mm. No.
showing the photos right now. Tim, why don't you come over here to see this? Oh, I, I've seen it. You've seen it. Obviously, it's visible. Are these on his property? They're on his property. Yeah. No, that's it. The pictures, are they on his property or from the road? Oh, no, they're, they're from the road. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oops, not that one. <laughs> Just we got that one. I will. <laughs> Oh, it was a very lovely picture of him. Huh? Yeah. So it's it is visible from the road. That's my son. It is visible from the road. Uh, it is open air storage. Oh yeah, I'll go over with you, sir. Did you want to show his attorney those pictures? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna show the picture. Let's see. Do you have the stripes? That's a whole folder. Yeah, this is the whole folder. <clears throat> Mike didn't give copies of that, yeah? is that it's highly visible from the road. I don't think the boats have been used in 20, 25 years. I haven't seen any difference from where they have been located where they are now. Um, I just want to say Mr. Manfield is a nice man. He's not a bad man. Um, but there's a problem with, this, with the bylaw, with, the, uh, with his uh, property right now. It's not, it's not adhering to the zoning bylaws of the town of Brookfield. Um, and I'm just doing my job. Uh, I've got a bunch of them out there. There's yes. others out there, and they're going to be coming before you. And I hope that uh, the board sees fits to adhere to the Brookfield zoning bylaws. That's what, that's what our job is. So, yeah, I mean, if, if we could just get clarification for Mr. Mansfield as to exactly what items are classified as junk and which items. Um, so I, I, I keep speaking for the board and I apologize, but and obviously we can move on. Thank, thanks, Herb. Um, I think we're playing semantics with the word junk. Um, sympathy to me lies to a property owner with what they have on their property. They pay their taxes, they pay for their home, they live there. I do understand neighbors and whatnot. When you come in and say everything's screened and show us those pictures and then we see Mr. Thomo's pictures, that's junk. Well, what's junk? Because I see boats, but then I see a lot of debris that are not boats, mm -hmm. so that I would agree with you is junk. But the boats, I don't believe, are junk, and that's what keeps getting cited here. So that's are why you I'm him for the boat. So that's part you, of it. You would ask. That's part of it. So They've been there for 25 boats. years. I don't think they're uh, water worthy. They haven't been moved. I know they haven't been moved. Um, so I don't know why he says he uses them. I don't believe that for one instance. But I, I think looking at the pictures, we can agree that some of those things that are there, boats for example, have value. A lot of the stuff does not have value. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and the lack of definition in the bylaw is problematic. Um, but I mean, if, if there are things that are valueless, that should be cleaned up. Which in the majority of Mr. Thomas' pictures are valueless junk. Right, but he keeps which is on citing the boats which Mr. Mansfield does not want to part with because they have value. So have you had the discussion with him in regards to the boats? Absolutely. He said he was going to get rid of them. He said he was going to clean up his property. He told me twice. Boats specific, he said he was including going to get rid of them. boats. Yes. Yeah, his intention is to sell them. That's the intention. So and that's why I mean that's why they have value. So if he intends to sell that. Technically, the junk has value as well for scrap metal and whatnot. Oh, sure it does. Um, initially, I, I was more than lenient. I explained it to him. I said, two months. If you need more time, that's fine. Has he paid any fines? Uh, no. 
has, has he accrued funds? Yes. What's that value at now? I think he's at, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars. Are they still accruing? Yeah, every day. $25 a day. Does the board have any questions, comments? I have, does, does he really intend to um, clean this up, or is this just just to fluff the soul, you know, just to drag it along? I mean, what what is his real intent? Well, Mr. Manfield retained my services two weeks ago. Yeah. I don't know him all that well. I've mm -hmm. taken him at his word. That's his intent. He's told me that from the day he uh, hired me. So okay. I believe that's his intent. Okay. If Mr. Manfield is true in his intent, I would be more than happy to work with him. Anybody else have any questions? And he needs to start playing on the help. Well, I'm going to make well, a, I'm I'm gonna make like, a motion. I would, like to, I would like to talk to Mr. Mansfield. I have been working on cleaning up the area. Uh, one problem I do have is uh, I have arthritis in my spine. I push my disc up. I have every nerve in my back electrically destroyed. I'm in bed every day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I get up at 7. From 11.30 to 12, I eat down the ceiling and say, I'm only good for about two and a half hours working, then I'm all done. At three o'clock, I'm in bed because I can't stand up anymore. I'm, this, I have been up this late for years. Uh, I'm on fentanyl patches every other day. Uh, as far as the boats go, I say, uh, we talked about the big boat, the other boats you said you didn't care about. You also said you would not find me. Uh, so far. Well, if you show progress. Well, well I've asked you what, what you want me to do, and you, you, you have not come out and said anything. I have to, I, we've talked and we've spoken about that a couple of times. Well, you, you've not come out and said you don't like this area, you don't like this. You say storage containers, what? I don't have any storage containers with oil. I don't have any storage containers with oil. I mean, you told me, I didn't say that, but you told me that you were going to clean up the, the yard. I have cleaned up. I, I have taken seen. three trips with the van to the dumpster pile. So I guess my question for you, Mr. Mansfield, is do you really intend on cleaning up that area? That's right. But also put up, the board helped me out my house once and with the animal control officer. And they gave me two hours notice they were coming up. The board health came up, searched the whole area. Dan uh, said that uh, I apologize, Mr. Mansfield, I can't find anything in your yard that I couldn't find in my own yard. You have lots of stuff here. But it's not against a lot, all the lots of stuff. <coughs> you go to the right and say, just put up a fence, put everything on the other side of the fence, out of sight, out of mind. I did exactly what they told me. You know, Mr. Bo said, you got a lot of first all he said, let me see, uh, that boat, the big boat, it's junk, it's gotta go. You can't move it anymore through any property, it's junk, it's gotta go. That's it. When was the last time you got that up? I said last year. Okay, I'll let that slide. He said, uh, you got lots of things in your yard, and you're going to be getting rid of lots of things in your yard, and I'm going to be the one who tells you what you need and what you can't do. He said, well, you know, if I buy something and put it on my property, and it's not hazardous to anybody, and it's behind the fence, what are you doing coming around behind my fence, seeing what I have? Do you go behind, do you have, do you have aerial surveillance? Are you going to check everybody's property out behind fences now? They told me when I put the fence up, they'd leave me alone. I put the fence up, maybe it'll leave me alone. So, so Mr. Thomo, did the fences that he put up cover so it doesn't follow it, the... It's not covering up with my car goes in. I said, will you let me put a gate up so they can't see through? And he said, no, don't waste your money. Who's they that told you to put the fence up? Who told me to put the fence up? Dan. Uh, Dan Noble. From the uh, Board of Health. Okay. Well, well it, it all falls on Mr. Thomas as his own enforcement officer. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, think, I think when you say semantics, the problem is going to lie in the fact that there is no objective criteria to determine what junk is. To me, sitting on this board, if it's visible and it's junk as we perceive through Mr. Thomas' pictures, he's, he's not following the bylaws. 
But that's your decision to make. And I'm more than happy to work with Houston Ansfield. If he shows how many, how many big days, intent, I'll, how many days, Nick, do you think it would take him to clean everything up? To well, obviously, he's going to need help. He can't do it by himself. I know that. Um, but he can. So how long that help? How long? 30 days? 60 days? I gave him two, over two months. He's already has 60 days? Yes. But I'll give him even more if he so shows up. Do we have any other questions? Because I'm going to make a motion. No. Any other questions? Any more questions? No. Questions? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a motion that um, this board forgives the fines that have accrued. That within 60 days, Mr. Mansfield will clean his property or come into compliance with the bylaws. And the, the cleaning will be acceptable to the zoning enforcement officer or the bylaws. Uh, after 60 days, the fine for $25 will start per day until it is clean. I want to stop you before this goes further. Yeah. Just understand that I have given him two months plus and that I'm I am willing to work with him to get this done. And that's what this board is doing as well. I would this rather way. have it not stated in that way. I would work with Mr. Mansfield one-on-one -on -one until it's done. Until it's done, but so why is this before us? Huh? Pe because he appealed to you guys. So why didn't you work with him before filing? I was trying to. I so did. You don't want I gave him two warnings. You don't want any teeth in. I, I want teeth, but I wanted so a 60, immediate. 60 day limit is teeth. So that's, that's immediate. The that's way I, day. the way I'm hearing the uh, motion is that he gets another 60 days. Correct. But if you're saying four months, it's, it was just brought to our attention this evening. Well, this board. <laughs> okay, that's all we got. Um, I'd like to see teeth in it. I'd like to have a time period. I'd like to forgive the fees. The I can work with him on that because that 200. Well, this board through our motion, if it's accepted and voted on, it's, it's forgiven. That $200 could be hired to hire someone, like someone that sits in this room to come in and take care of it in two hours. I can work with Mr. Mansfield and forgive his fines if he cleans up the property. Make an attempt. I'm just looking for an attempt. I have been working on the property and I'm taking three loads of the dump. But it's hard by yourself. I understand that. I know it's, the, it's hard for you. I know it's hard. No, it's not hard for you. I killed the van. No, you said it's okay. hard for you, and I believe I'm you. not asking for your fee. I'm just saying what it is. And, so and I, I paid the receipts for those. I, I made a motion. There was discussion. I don't know if it's a second. I'll second it. No. Okay. All in favor? Well, discussion on the motion. Do right. we have discussion on the motion? Yeah. Yeah. You had discussion? Yeah. Roll call. Done. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Unanimous. So you get 60 more days. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you have a date on that? From 60 today? days from today. From today. Yeah. All right. They'll be in the notes huh? for the minutes. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. From today. Yep. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 629 in June. So we'll call a minute for days. Yeah. It's getting kind of warm in here. But with a fan going, if you guys don't talk loud, we can't hear. You. So let's put the fan on. All right. You guys yell up loud. Oh, I think you can hear me, Kermit, when I can. Yes, we can hear you. I'm sorry, Kermit. <laughs> You got that? Where's Bill? Um, he's going to some show with vacation. Yeah. But I mean, we just try to give the man some extra, you know, leeway, I guess. Just listen to that.
Yep. And he was like, this is the group about this. And I said, okay, I'm going to bet. And I was your sports fan. Right. Can you find somebody to help you too? Yeah, this tune is always going to go nowhere. You know? But by the time it's done, I mean, he gets up, it's going to be, you know, 5,000. Is that the car drives up? I don't know, it's a car. But then you got to, I mean, unfortunately, you got to pay the taxes on the car. You got to pay the taxes on the car. Okay. I'd like to open up the hearing. It's at 6.30. Uh, the Brookfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing at 6.30 Wednesday, July 19th, 2017, the Brookfield Town Hall, first floor. The purpose of this hearing is to consider a request from Clarence Snyder to appeal a decision by the Zoning Enforcement Officer regarding a special permit that was issued to John D. Holcraft for the property owned by him at 6 South Maple Street in Brookfield. The request to ask the Board of Appeals to determine the special permit is no longer valid. This hearing is for administrative appeal. The property is located in Business Aid District. Mr. Schneider. Yes, Chairman. What I'd like to do, seeing as I was an attorney in the I'd like to pass out this uh, chronology of events that we will be taking up in about a minute, if that's acceptable to okay. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to. I'd, I'd, I spoke to you, I want a continuation, and I have counsel here. I spoke to you, and I addressed the front board as well, before you get started here, so. Well, I think what I'd like to do, um, and I, I can only speak for myself, in the sense that I would like to take information um, as well from everybody while we're here. Everyone's come out to do this, um, and just put together, you know, take evidence, arguments, about this whole thing. Right, and then you should have gotten in front of my, when my counsel's here. And uh, he will, we won't necessarily, we don't know if we're going to make a decision tonight or not, David. I mean, it's, if you continue it, we'll continue it, and you can have your lawyer at that point. But we, you have any time. I'm going to leave the meeting then. That's what okay. you yeah, Mr. Chairman, before I'm requesting, I'm requesting, I'm going to be the question, Mr. Chairman, I may be heard for one moment. Before he leaves the meeting, I'd like you to know I called him Monday and yesterday to ask him the name and address and phone number of his attorney so I could speak with him. He hung up on me both times. I asked him to call me back with the information. He wouldn't call me back. He hung up on me twice. No one hung up on you. Dave, 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 okay. Dave, can we just ask you to stay here to listen? No, because I asked and I asked. I spoke to you and the front office for a continuation. So well, this I have the right to have, I'm, if, if you do, alleged allegations against me, I have the right to have representation here. Okay? So you don't want to participate in any discussion tonight? No, I'm not going to participate. So Who's I have that, that I'm requesting, excuse me, I'm speaking, sir. I'm requesting a continuation. So if you'd like to give it to me, fine. If you don't, that's fine. Do you want to sit down? No, I'm asking for an answer. Mr. Chairman, may I just ask through you, Mr. Chairman to the board, does Mr. Holdcraft give you the name and address of his attorney? No. No. He wouldn't give that to me when I called him Monday morning with Mr. Snyder in my office. I called him at 10.30 Monday morning, asked him that question. He said he was in the veterinarian's office. He called me back. He didn't call back. I called him yesterday morning. He hung up on me, said he didn't have to give me the information. So frankly, Mr. Chairman, I don't think he has an attorney. I think this is just a stalling tactic. Mr. Chair? I, I personally believe Mr. Holcraft has an attorney. Um, me personally, I'd like to hear what Mr. Snyder has to say, either through himself or through counsel. After that, I, I would make a motion to ask for Mr. Um, Holcraft's continuance so he could have a general president. But I think I'll have to hear it. Mr. Chair, if you can it's time. Come on, look, please. Sir, I'm glad you've heard on the request of Slackman. With all due respect, Mr. Chairman, number one, if I represent a party, I wouldn't have notified the selectmen that I wanted a continuance. I would have notified you. The continuance is subject to your discretion. You, uh, imagine you have a group of people here to hear this case tonight. So the fact that Mr. Holdcraft is waiting until the last minute to request a continuance, he's not giving you the name of the attorney, he wouldn't give me the name of the attorney Monday and yesterday. This is nothing but a stalling tactic. Now, all these people have taken time 
I just drove two and a half hours from Boston to be here, and I, I request that you deny the motion for continuance. You hear it tonight. If Mr. Holcraft can have his Mr. attorney Mr. here. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm going to ask that if, if people can't be controlled in this room, we do have police officers that they be removed from this room. That this is a oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, was that directed to me? No, 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 Mr. Chairman, I did speak to you directly. Yes, you did speak to me. This attorney is going to stand up here and lie and make allegations against me, which he just did. I do have an attorney, and I also spoke to you. Did I? Yes, did you I did. Not? Yes, I you did. I also spoke to the firm room, so I'm not going to sit here and listen to this guy come in here and lie. Okay. No, you, well, Mr. Chairman, I can assure you, I wouldn't lie to this board. It doesn't. No, I mean, he did speak to me about right. continuing the um, this meeting. My thing was, it was it's you know it's an administrative appeal, and I can appreciate uh, Mr. Holcraft, but we also have to take in information, David, to make our own to make a this you know educated decision on what's going on. And if we continue this and continue it, then we're not going to get anywhere very you quickly. Continue it at all? It's no, but if we do, we first. won't. If this is the first. If we continue it, we're going to go nowhere. No, so no, we're, we're, we're going to continue house. along, and we're going to hear what people have to say, and we're going to go from there. We're going to continue with this meeting. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I could introduce Attorney Chris Brackett to represent me and to share with you additional information beyond that with, with which you did receive. And what is your attorney's name? Brackett. Yes, Gary Brackett, Mr. Gary Chairman. Brackett. For the record, Gary Brackett, firm Brackett and Lucas, 19 Cedar Street, Worcester. Do you have a business card? Um, I have some of the cards, sir, but uh, I'd be happy to provide that information. For the secretary, mm -hmm. All my information should be included, uh, obviously, in, in the package, um, but I'll be happy to provide that to you. He's got something coming along. Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to make my presentation. If that's just, if I may pass these down, sir. There's one for, there should be one for each of you. But, one for your secretary for your minutes. She's a board member. Yes. And I'll provide one to Mr. Holcraft in the absence of the attorney, so we can give it to his attorney. Mr. Martin, Mr. Chairman, are you going to continue this meeting tonight? That's all I want to know. Yes, I am. I need to know if you're going to continue. I am, yes, I am continuing this meeting. start the presentation, then to me, it sounds like you're going to have to hear it. We are going to continue the meeting, yes. We are going to have a hearing. When I have counsel here. As we're going to continue the meeting now. What, the, what does that mean? Explain that to me. We're, going to, we're, we're, we're having the meeting right now. Did you, the, I'll cut as right as that. No, we're not at this point. Oh, you just said you were. After we collect information, we have conversation, we may or may not continue the meeting, David. That's the bottom line. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take that as a note. I don't care. You'll see y'all in court. Bye bye. Here we go. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, just by winter introduction, um, I've been a public attorney for uh, 42 years now, serving at the state and, and uh, town, I'm sorry, at the city and town level. And Oh, I'm sorry. Are people having trouble hearing? Yeah. I wonder if oh, okay. No, I guess that's uh, yeah. okay. not, that's not public. I'll just uh, briefly, by way of introduction, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've been a public attorney for 42 years, serving at the city and town level, representing communities around the state and private clients, such as Mr. Snyder. I've been working with the zoning statute since it was adopted as Chapter 808 of the Acts of 1975 by the Massachusetts Legislature. And during that time, I've been involved with uh, zoning review, zoning opinions to planning boards, zoning boards, conservation commissions. And I just, I'm just returning now from a hearing before the land court on a zoning case. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this case represents some fairly straightforward issues. Um, I prepared a chronology of events for you with attached documents I'll refer to during the course of my presentation. Um, I have also uh, included 
Uh, the very last page of that package is what I've referred to as just a brief statement of legal elements. And those are the statutory references that I'll refer to, all of which are embodied in your Brookfield zoning bylaw, and that's required by state statute. Uh, briefly, Mr. Chairman, starting July 13, 2003, the zoning board issued a special permit for a second principal use. And the highlights uh, of that special permit, and the special permit is attached as numbered pages one and two. The highlights are that the special permit is issued for a period of two years, subject to renewal for another two year period. Uh, there's a description within the special permit that the shed was to be eight feet wide, 27 feet long, eight feet high. The sign was to conform to the town zoning bylaws. No items left outside of the building anytime. I'll stress that. No items to be left outside the building anytime. I just drove by the property on my way in. And here's if that condition is not being here too. If you look at the decision itself, Mr. Chairman, this was proposed on numbered page one. This was allowed as a so-called second principal use. Normally you're only allowed to have one principal use on the property. Um, so this was allowed by special permit. Um, it was supposed to be a retail service for charitable reasons and to conduct the business from a shed. Uh, I point out on numbered page one and item number 10, a sign stating retail service for charitable reasons, which will conform to the town's zoning bylaws. And as I mentioned on numbered page two, paragraph 13, the special permits issued for a period of two years subject to renewal for another two year period upon the applicant's compliance with all the conditions in this permit on the operation of the business during the permit period. So Mr. Chairman, the chronology continues that on or about May 24th, 2005, which is almost two years after the special permit was issued, a building permit was issued for a sign. And that's on numbered page three. And you'll see the sign, actually the building permit application was submitted. All we've been able to find is one signed by Mr. Holdcraft. We haven't been able to find one signed by the building inspector actually issuing the building permit. But the, the sign, the area or volume on numbered page three was supposed to be four by eight or approximately 32 square feet. Estimated cost $350. <clears throat> now, Mr. Chairman, on June 2nd, 2005, the next item on the chronology, numbered page six, you'll see there's another decision of the zoning board. And that says that some members of the zoning board voted at their meeting last night for an extension for John Holdcraft to build a shed, as agreed to almost two years ago. The shed will be 27 feet by eight feet with a 36 inch wide door. So the, the dimensions of the shed have changed from the original decision. The original agreement was July 17th, 2003. This extension is good until December 31, 2005. Now, one thing I'll point out, Mr. Chairman, is this extension doesn't request an extension of the two-page special permit that we just reviewed that was issued on July 13th, 2003. <coughs> the only thing it does is allow for an extension of the shed. So, Mr. Chairman, just as a matter of straightforward zoning law, the original special permit expired two years after it was issued. And the only extension was granted on June 2nd and that wasn't extended for another two years, as it was originally discussed in 2003. It says the agreement was this extension is good until December 31, 2005. So by the terms of your previous decisions, Mr. Chairman, it appears that neither one of them was appealed by Mr. Holdcraft. He has a right to appeal a decision to the zoning board within 20 days after the decision is filed in the town clerk's office. So he did not appeal this extension. It's only six months, it's only for the shed. As of the uh, end of the original two year period, the allowance of the sign 
is no longer in force and effect. So, Mr. Chairman, I point out that the next numbered page on the chronology of page seven is the building permit for the shed. Now, once again, I'll point out, and this is important for you to consider, but uh, the extension was granted in July of 2005. The original permit was granted in July of 2003, but Mr. Holdcraft waited until November 2005, about two months before the special permit was going to expire, to get a building permit. Why he waited for that period of time is beyond me, but um, he hasn't exercised the rights of the original special permit, and he's waiting until less than 60 days before the expiration of the extension. So, <clears throat> as of December 31, 2005, the special permit for the shed has expired. <clears throat> now, fast forward, Mr. Chairman, to March 20th of this year. Mr. Snyder, uh, after consulting with me, made a request for zoning enforcement to the building inspector. And um, he recites on numbered page nine, on the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that he recites the chronology I've just given you. The July 16, 2003 special permit <clears throat> regarding a sign conforming to the bylaws. It's issued for two years. June 2005 extension. Um, the extension is good until December 31, 2005. It also notes the following information. John Holdcraft does not have a building permit as of this date. No shrubs have been planted as agreed upon. Well, Mr. Chairman, in the original decision, it said that he couldn't get an extension until all the conditions of the original decision were met. But this is an acknowledgement that the conditions of the original decision hadn't been met, but an extension was granted anyway. But neither Mr. Holdcraft or no other abutter appealed, so that extension was allowed. But all his rights under the special permit expired as of December 30th, 2005. So Mr. Snyder <coughs> then recites that since the special permit on numbered page 10 and subsection D, the special permit expired on December 31, 2005, Holdcroft never sought a further extension of the original July 16, 2003 special permit, nor has he sought a new special permit for the business under the current Brookfield zoning bylaw. Therefore, the current operation of a retail service for charitable reasons and the associated signage are illegal uses in the zoning district. Because Mr. Chairman, if they're not allowed as a matter of right and the special permits expired, they can't continue to exist. So Mr. Snyder requested that you, the building inspector, zoning enforcement officer, Mr. Zono, issue a zoning enforcement officer pursuant to the statute 48 section seven and the zoning bylaw of Brookfield section 12A order the removal forthwith of the business shed and signage from the premises. And then I also asked, uh, Ms. Or Mr. Snyder asked that Mr. Uh, Tomo, I'm sorry, um, provide him with a response within 14 days, which is what the statute provides. If you submit a written request for enforcement, the zoning enforcement officer or the building inspector is supposed to give you an answer within 14 days. Um, on the next numbered document, bottom right hand corner, it's page number 11. And Mr. Tomo did respond on April 3rd. And he stated uh, to Mr. <coughs> Snyder, you requested a cease and desist zoning enforcement officer. Um, an investigation inspection of the premises was completed. And then he states after reviewing the special permit, Mr. Holdcraft received it should be noted it was given for charitable business so, yeah. in the shed. The sign required a permit, which was given to Holdcraft in May of 2005. <coughs> required a building permit for a shed, which was given in November 2005. Then he states, reviewing the order of conditions. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to wait until the member returns? Or? Um, if you wouldn't mind, just giving, giving a, him a couple yeah. minutes. I'd just like to get caught up looking at those documents. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chair? 
I want to point out uh, as a sidebar that any discussion among other members while someone is talking also gets picked up by the camera. Mm -hmm. So, correct. Um, we should be aware of crosstalk. Thank you. Those are very sensitive mics. Enforcement order, uh, Mr. Tomo does address, he says, reviewing the order of conditions. The following conditions are in violation. No items will be left outside the building any time. Item number six, landscaping, according to submitted blueprint along Route 9 and High Street to hide from view what's on the property has not been completed. Condition number 10, a sign stating retail service for charitable reasons, which will conform to the town zoning bylaws, is not in place. Consequently, as a result of the investigation inspection, cease and desist order will be issued to Mr. Holcraft. And the next document you have is five days later, Mr. Tomo issues the cease and desist order to Mr. Holcraft. Um, and if you'll note on numbered page 13, it was received in hand by Mr. Holcraft. It's noted there April 8th at 722 AM uh, delivered by the constable, Mr. I believe that's Mr. Lupieri, uh, constable. I'm sorry, Lapierre. Lapierre, thank you. Um, constable Brookfield. And in that, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Tomo once again repeats the violation of the three conditions. And then the bottom paragraph on numbered page 12, you'll see you're hereby notified you're in violation of condition 2, 6, and 10 of the special permit. You are hereby ordered, and this is underlined, to bring the property into compliance with the conditions of the August 18, 2003 special permit, including appropriate landscaping and signage. Then it states, if you fail to bring the property into compliance as indicated by June 30th, 2017, which is 19 days ago, uh, the town will take any and all necessary action to enforce this order, including the filing of suit in a court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, please be advised there'll be no further notice before commencement of any suit and there's notice of a right to appeal. And that's a requirement under the statute. You have a right within 30 days from an order or decision of a building inspector to appeal to this zoning board. And Mr. Holdcraft chose not to take that appeal. So, Mr. Chairman, at a minimum, the building inspector's cease and desist order is final. It can't be challenged before you in this proceeding because Mr. Holdcraft hasn't taken an appeal. The only issue we have before you mm -hmm. in 
this appeal. And if I can direct you to numbered page 15, and you'll see that um, <coughs> this is a copy of the letter that Mr. Snyder sent uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, filing the appeal within the 30 days of the building inspector's decision. Um, and you'll see that the reason he's taking the appeal was because in his original request for enforcement, he raised the issue that the special permit was expired. If the special permit's expired, frankly, you don't have to seek enforcement of the conditions. The conditions have expired. So Mr. Snyder presented to the zoning board, which is the subject of tonight's hearing. Um, I am aggrieved by the decision. I request a public hearing on the appeal. He notes in paragraph three, the response did not address the primary issue of whether the special permit had expired on December 31, 2005 by the express terms of the June 2, 2005 decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Chairman, the next document is number page 16. Uh, in the same way, I reached out to Mr. Holcraft Monday morning and again yesterday morning. And I called him on my cell phone and he answered the phone. And Monday morning, he said he was in the veterinarian's office. I asked him if I could have the name and phone number of his attorney. He said he was in the veterinarian's office. He called me back. Not getting a call back. I called him again yesterday morning. And he said I had no right to know who his attorney was. I said I just wanted to call the attorney, speak to him before tonight's hearing and to determine, if I could, the reason for the request for continuance. If he had another scheduled meeting or if there's some personal conflict or he's on vacation, those are all valid reasons to continue the hearing. I just had a hearing last night in the town of Leicester. One of the zoning board members couldn't attend. They only had three members. They couldn't proceed. The hearing was continued to 4.30. It was originally scheduled for 7 o'clock. So, Mr. Chairman, continuances are fairly routine, but the reason I made the phone call to him was just to try to find out who his attorney was. The reason I sent the letter to Mr. Blake was, as your, uh, from your law firm, Copeland and Page, your town council, mm -hmm. is just to introduce myself and indicate that if he had received any documents, I'd be happy to review them with him before tonight, if he was attending tonight, if he had any questions we could talk. I wasn't asking him to make a decision on your behalf, but just as a, as a courtesy. I spoke to him this morning. He advised me that he had not been requested to attend the meeting, has not been requested to review the issue. So I said, if the matter is referred to you and it's continued to another meeting, I'd be happy to talk to you in the interim. And Mr. Chairman, the last page, page number 17, is a set of photographs that Mr. Snyder uh, took regarding the property. Um, the one photograph on the left is noted prior to July 14th. And there are two photos uh, here showing two different vantage points of the property at 7.55 in the morning on July 16th. And Mr. Chairman, uh, my understanding is that, the, that Mr. Tomo, the zoning enforcement officer, is currently reviewing his options for enforcement. He has three options. Under your bylaw, he can pursue non-criminal ticketing as a starting point for the past 19 days of violation, because obviously there's been no compliance. If that doesn't work, he can go to the East Brookfield District Court, file a criminal action for violation of the town zoning bylaw. And that could be, you can, you can obtain fines up to $300 a day, and that carries a criminal record with it. It is a criminal violation to violate the town bylaw, but you have a non-criminal ticketing method as the first step. The third option, Mr. Chairman, and I've been involved in these matters myself where I've done all three. Advise the building inspector, start with tickets. If that doesn't work, we'll go to district court, get a clerk magistrate's hearing for the issuance of a criminal complaint. And at the same time, if it's, if it's something that's injurious to people in the neighborhood, or it's affecting the quality of life of neighbors or people in the community, you can go to superior court and get an injunction. And Mr. Chairman, if we were in court tomorrow morning in front of a judge for an injunction, and if Mr. Holdcraft tried to put up a defense, well, number one, he didn't appeal the cease and desist order within 30 days, so that's fine. Uh, he's in violation of those three conditions at a minimum. He decided to walk out tonight, 
frankly, it's a rare occurrence when I've seen that happen to somebody involved in a public hearing, especially a zoning enforcement issue. But you don't have the name of an attorney, you don't have the phone number of an attorney or an address. In my experience, Mr. Chairman, if I was the town council and I was aware that someone was seeking continuance, the request would be, have your attorney direct a letter to the chairman, the continuance is at the discretion of the board. Because once you've given public notice of this hearing and people show up, you have to weigh the reason for the continuance versus the inconvenience to the applicant, Mr. Snyder, and the members of the public. And you have a right to say no to a continuance if the reason isn't good enough or you don't want to postpone this any longer. So, Mr. Chairman, the next page, this briefly, the statement of legal elements. This is just to let you know, um, under Chapter 40A, Section 9, which governs special permits, and the Lester, I'm sorry, the Brookfield uh, Zoning <coughs> Bylaw has to comply with 40A, Section 9. It specifically says, and such permits may also impose conditions, safeguards, and limitations on time or use. So the special permit that was granted in 2003 had an expiration date of two years. If the zoning board wanted to make it open-ended, they would not have put a two-year expiration date on it. They said you can have it for two years. And if you want to extend it, you have to come in to extend it. They were authorizing an extension up to two years. The extension was only sought for six months. Now, I don't have any control over that, and I don't know if any of you members were on the board back at that time, but that's what was requested, that was granted. Between 2005 and the present, there's been no further request for extension. There's been no further request to, to submit a new application, a special permit, if your bylaw has been changed in any way. Uh, the second citation is 48 section seven, request for zoning enforcement. That's the statute that we have used along with the Brookfield Zoning Bylaw when Mr. Snyder filed his initial request. And Chapter 40A, Sections 8 and 15 govern the procedure for what's called an administrative appeal. You first have to, if you don't like a decision of a building inspector uh, or a zoning enforcement officer, you first have to appeal it to this board. And then if you're aggrieved by a decision of this board, you can appeal to the land court or to the superior court but there's a requirement for that internal appeal first before going to the court. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to answer any questions of the board or I'll be happy to wait until you've heard from the public or... I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, from what I'm hearing on his defense, and that this is through the chair having a discussion with him, is that there's a 10-year statute of limitations. Is that true? Is there a case law on that? Tenure statute limitations as to what? In regards Zoning enforcement? Correct. Well, in, in regards to his variance. Which I'm going to Special I'm, permit. You got a special, special permit. permit. Which I'm going to even use a date of 2005 as opposed to 2003. No, there's actually a, a I don't know if you get any of that from Mr. Holcraft, but. No, no. No, this is from, we spoke, I spoke with uh, um, Jeff Blake at uh, Coltman and Page. Mm -hmm. And that, this is just 40, section 48, section 7, there's a, Statute, he, he said so, 10 year and a five year, um, and he was driving, so he couldn't. Oh, okay. He couldn't. Yeah, actually, that's a different situation, Mr. Chairman, and for you, Mr. Comptoise. Uh, the 10 year and six year statute limitation under 487 relates to a building permit, or if you put up a building without a building permit, there's a 10 year statute limitations for to remove it if it was put up illegally. Mm -hmm. If it's put up with a building permit, there's a six year statute limitations. But these were put up under a special permit. Yeah. So there's no statute of limitations on enforcement of a special permit. So that's a difference. If you were solely talking about a building, if someone put up a building illegally and you just discovered it yesterday, it's nine years old, you could go after it if they never got a building permit. If it's nine years old and they had a building permit and there's no special permit involved, then technically they'd be grandfathered. But that doesn't apply here. Thank you, sir. I don't, I don't have any more questions. Questions? Sure, should we get everybody's name here? Did, every, did everybody sign in? No. no. <laughs> do, we have a, do we have a pad of paper? Is the chairman? One thing. Um, after he was given the uh, cease and desist, he was given that a second. Good morning.
a reminder, and he is given, I did give him a fine status up two or three days ago, especially on July 1st, $25 a day for non compliant So it started on July 1st? Yes. Just for clarification. No, this is for everybody in the room. Yeah, the, the sign up has kind of come around, so make sure you sign up that you're here. So, so for clarification, I think everybody has turned this hearing into a yellow sign hearing. From what I'm seeing, this has nothing to do with the yellow sign. Mr. Through, through the chair, ma'am? Mr. Chairman, I'm Sandy Couture. I live at number nine South Maple Street, right kitty corner to this. I know this has nothing to do with the sign. And at this point, if I could get rid of the sign, I would love it. But what I was here in 2003 with 50 other people wanting to know what was going to happen on that space when Mr. Holcraft wanted to put his stuff out there. We were told it would be inside. We, would to we were told there would be plantings. There has never been any of that. When we complained to uh, either, it was either the zoning enforcement, which was not Mr. Thono at the time, or the building inspector, we were told we had to file a complaint and we couldn't do it anonymously. Mr. Holcraft doesn't, he, he'll bug you if he knows that you have complained about him. So I'm looking at the junk every single day when I leave my home. My friends have to look at the junk. My family has to look at the junk. And we were told it was going to be screened inside or whatever. Those things have never happened. I agree 100%. There's three conditions that I feel that he's in violation of. The three conditions that are laid out. My only issue, if the irony is, is that the gentleman, and I won't mention the name, sitting behind you, that the town has gone after, well, not gone after, not been able to help because of bylaw violations from a, a dealership right, right down the street. Um, my only issue is the law. And from what we're being told from KMP, there might be a statute of limitations on here that the town didn't follow. How many years? Huh? How many years? Well, that's, I don't, from what we're told, it's, there's not even a statute of limitations. Yeah, from what we're told, but I mean, this is still, I mean, we, I, so, so from what I'm from what I'm seeing, back when she's stating that there's 50 people, and it's well documented that back in '03 there were 50 people here. He had 14 orders of condition. Three of those are still not in effect. One of them stated that he has two years and they can refile, which he did back on June 2nd of '05. They gave him another date. He did put up the shed. He filed for that permit. It was installed. But I don't know if those conditions carry forward with that original, if there's a statute of limitations. But as far as I'm concerned, if they're still in effect, he's in violation of those three limitations, of those stipulations, those three conditions. So the thing that bothers me the most is he's saying his own building coming. Charlie, Charlie, can I make a motion? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that, well, I'd like to cut to the chase, and I'd like to make a motion that we consider whether that we consider whether the primary consider the primary issue of the appeal, uh, which was whether the special permit has expired. Correct. Yes. I second that motion. Okay. That's so, so for discussion, what would what would that motion do? We we would vote on whether. The, uh, on the primary issue, which is whether the special permit has expired. But you're asking a question through the motion there's no yeah. way we have to have structure to move forward. No offense, but it's just an open-ended. And uh, at this stage of the game, I'm not comfortable making a decision on this, my personal self, uh, without talking with Colton and Page, just to make sure that we were in legal standings with, you know, so I would ask decision. that both you gentlemen would withdraw, withdraw yes. your motion in yes. second, and maybe I'll make a motion that we continue this until Copeland and Page gives a determination on the status of 
would you want to say the uh, of whether the special permit, permit has, still exists has expired and, and, and if, or not? And if, the condition, and if the conditions still need to be met legally? Well, if the special it's permit has expired, um, it seems like that's um, so if it's a moot point. So if you think if it's expired, he doesn't have to follow those conditions? No. He, um, he's in violation. His business and his shed and everything else there is in violation. So, when, when, so, so through the motion, we want to ask an opinion from KP. We want to be very precise on if this, what that if question this, is. Well, if the special permit has expired, then anything he's doing there that we can see at this address called Six Maple that actually doesn't exist. I, I just spoke with this. Yeah, so um, doesn't exist. but we all know where it is. Um, that uh, is not supposed to be there. Uh, he can always um, ask for another special permit. So the motion is to seek it, seek an opinion from KP in regards to well, the, the uh, well that, that wasn't my motion. No, that's but, not your. No, but you, you, you feel more motions. comfortable yeah. about Asking checking a with uh, Koppelman and Page first. Yes. So to continue I, and, and seek an opinion from KP in regards to both variances and orders of conditions. Right, if, yes, if the, you know, if the, because he might find something above and beyond what we're requesting. So if we kind of keep it broad, he'll he'll do a bigger search. Well, I think I think I think. I'm sorry, just for the record, go ahead. Correct the minutes to reflect. If there's going to be a motion that relates to the special permit and the extension, there are no variances involved. Right, there's okay. right. Right. special permits only. So the motion would be to review the special permits. And to give an opinion in regards to whether they are expired or not. And, and in term, anything else they want to say what, is what fine. What would happen to the three conditions that? Well, I, that, that's that, a, that's that's really that's that really a point, officer. and that's begging this thing to continue right. on. But if they have anything else whatsoever to say about it, that would be useful, I'm sure, for the town. Well, that's what I'm trying to get. Is yes, to, pro to, to protect the town that we make the right decision. Because as we sit, that's what you're thinking. As, as, we exactly sit, as we sit here, I think we all think that he's in violation of all three conditions. No, I think the special permit is expired, and that's a moot point. Which he would be in, in violation of the three conditions, then. Right. And I'm just he, not sure. I'm not comfortable with the whole conversation that I had with the with um, the lawyer from Goldman Page that there might possibly be some gray areas there. Right. And we don't know that because, and I spoke to him as he's driving down the road, so he couldn't oh. tell me. He was not sitting in his yeah. office in front of. Do you have any? You know, he didn't have any information. He was driving, and there's some gray areas, and I just yes. don't want to make. You know, I want to make the right decision. I want to make an educated decision. So I'm going to let. So you that make, sounds I'm, good. I'm going to withdraw my motion. I'm going to let you make a motion because you had the discussion with him. Okay. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we continue this meeting. Um, speak with Copeland and Page in regards to the um, special permit granted to Mr. Holcraft on the 3rd of, or what's the uh, date here? Um, well, there's two. Yeah, there's two. Well, I, I want to find out. It would be the last one, though, as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah, the no 05, but no 03, um, what was attached to the 03 special permit is that still part of the 05 special permit? And what is, do they still exist? Um, is there a time um, limit on this or, or, or what? And that's, I mean, that's, I don't know what else to say. Mr. Okay. Chair, I have a question. Yes, please. Address through the chair to Mr. Snyder. Do you have, to your knowledge, has Copeland and Page already been involved with this appeal? They have been informed that we were, would be here tonight and that we were reaching out to them for any clarifications or any support. Uh huh. Okay. So we've, we've, we've done what we thought was the best. Mr. Thomo, have you reached out to KP? Uh, negative. What I'm concerned about is a group of people that are here this evening. Many know it's anonymous for the very reason of the other side. And uh, I think that these people deserve an opportunity to make a comment to the board as to the feelings that they have related to what's gone on at Six South Maple for a very long time. It is my position that that operation no longer has a permit, no longer had a permit as of 2003. Certain grace periods or whatever was allowed in 2005 to build the shed or whatever, but as of the end of 2005, he had nothing. 
And that's and why so, we're here tonight. And that's what, that's what we're trying to get an opinion from KP for. And I, I think everyone in this room mirrors her, her voice. Correct? Correct? Take a vote. Can I say something? Can I say something real quick? Go ahead, Herb. I got paperwork here from Copeland Page. That sign is stop up there at that address of John David Holcraft. It, what he has put on there about me is a hostile work environment. I have paperwork here from Copeland Page stating that. Mr. Chairman, may I just inquire, is that a legal opinion provided to it's, Sir Ewan in your official capacity? Yes, it is. It, He's the highway it. superintendent. So, so Mr. Okay. Chair, I, I don't think that has anything to do with this conversation. Uh, no, it does not, and we, we all know what the big yellow sign means. <clears throat> Mr. Fagner. Uh, couple of questions, if I could. Yes. One to Mr. Tomo. Um, after tonight, in your role as zoning enforcement officer, what do you do? Well, unfortunately, uh, we might have to wait a year no. of fines being accrued before we take it to the next step. I'm going to call uh, yeah. Mr. Blake uh, to confirm that. Um, but we might, I might have to wait a little bit. The so fines are accruing daily right now. If it's, if I, if I could, so have you gone to court in East Brookfield? What, what, I don't know if I That's going to be the next. That will be another step. That's, uh, well, he, 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 it only started on July 1st. Right, yeah. He was given until June 30th. He's 425 bucks in the hole today. Chairman, with all due respect to the zoning enforcement officer, there, there's no requirement. There's no requirement that you wait a year to begin a court enforcement. Uh, one question I had uh, through you to him, if I may, is uh, I don't have the bylaw in front of me, but usually a non-criminal ticketing bylaw has a fine for the first violation, then the fine goes up for the second violation, and then for the third or any subsequent violation. So I'm just curious, through you to Mr. Tomo, uh, what is the what is the scale of violations? on the ticket process. First violation, second, third. Yes. Twenty-five only the day right now. But what about a second, third, or tenth, or fifteenth, or twenty-ninth violation? Well I think they can go up to two hundred and fifty dollars a day. Okay. I believe. Mr. Fagg. Uh, okay, that, okay, my next question. The legal opinion that you were looking at, is that a public um, document that you read from tonight? Uh, no, there's, there's notes that I had just jotted down from when I was speaking with um, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey Blake uh, from Copeland and Blake Page. This is, this is just my, my notes of, as I was speaking to him. Oh, okay. Mr. Chairman, I would just a further comment, uh, just for Mr. Tomo's benefit, uh, having worked with this statute, the reason non-criminal tickets were adopted was because the only method that the building inspectors, only enforcement officer had or the health agent or the conservation agent for violation of town bylaws was to go to court. So the district court clerks around the state suggested legislation under chapter 40, section 21D for non-criminal ticketing. So the purpose for that is to send someone a ticket, give them sort of a wake up call, you're violating the bylaw, please you know, take care of it, stop violating. And then the next step, you don't have to issue tickets for a year, with all due respect to Mr. Tomo. No, I think that you're right. You're absolutely right. Okay. I, I, missed I would suggest that. that if you start issuing tickets one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, someone's just ignoring you, they're going about their merry way. The next step, you go to district court, you don't even need an attorney. Mr. Tomo can go to the desk, fill out an application for a criminal complaint in longhand, or type it up, that was then be set down for a hearing before a clerk magistrate to decide whether there's probable cause to issue a criminal complaint. If there's a criminal complaint, then the next step is you appear before a judge and you're arraigned on a criminal complaint for violation of the Brookfield Zoning Bylaw. Now, if that doesn't get Mr. Holdcraft's attention, at the same time, you can go to Superior Court, file a request for preliminary injunction, you give the other side three days notice, you win before a judge, and you say, Your Honor, the building inspector, zoning enforcement officer issued a cease and desist order, it hasn't been complied with, he's ignoring tickets, he's ignoring the district court, we want an injunction. I can tell you, having been before courts on these matters, if you're violating a bylaw and you didn't appeal it to this board, the judge is gonna say injunction granted, period. You're violating a bylaw, the public interest is served by respecting town bylaws. 
So you could have a group of tickets. Now, if Mr. Holdcraft does not appeal those tickets issued by Mr. Tomo, Mr. Tomo can go to court and seek criminal enforcement of the tickets, in addition to seeking criminal prosecution for violation of the bylaw. So if Mr. Holdcraft is, does as he's done in the past, which is basically to ignore, he didn't take an appeal from the, the uh, cease and desist order, that's fine. He hasn't come back to seek an extension of special permit, special permits expired. If he ignores the tickets, those are final. And the, the zoning enforcement officer can go to the clerk's office and say, I want to enforce the tickets from July 1 to whatever day because there's been no appeal and no payment. And the clerk magistrate will set up a criminal hearing for enforcement of the tickets. So those are the methods of enforcement to try to get the attention of somebody who's just ignoring you. And frankly, it's a case where when I've been involved, you have to start chasing them because they want to keep ignoring you and pretend that they can do whatever they want to do. And frankly, from what I see going on here, Mr. Holdcraft doesn't care about the requirements of the town zoning bylaw or the cease and desist order. He's going to force Mr. Tomo to continue chasing him with tickets and court action, cause the town the legal expense for town council to go to superior court. Frankly, if you go to a clerk magistrate's hearing, they issue a criminal complaint, the DA's office handles the criminal complaint. You don't need Copeland and Page. It's suddenly a criminal matter, Commonwealth versus Mr. Holdcraft, violation of town zoning bylaw. So there are methods available to correct this situation, bring it in line. So Mr. Chair, I'm going to uh, second your motion in regards to continuing and seeking town council's opinion. No, 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 no. 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 Sharon Bodie chair of the planning board. I believe the last meeting of this body was to hear an appeal to a cease and desist order from a Mr. Donald O'Clair, who owns a property next to, and many of you are familiar with this, the town transfer station. Mr. O'Clair is conducting a legal business there because his permit expired. He failed to show for that meeting, and I know because I was there to speak on behalf of the planning board. This same body voted to deny his appeal without going to Copeland and Page, without seeking further um, statements from Mr. O'Clair or from anybody. You denied his appeal on the spot. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I suggest that this, uh, that this matter be handled in the same way. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Mr. Chairman, just a point of clarification. Was Mr. Holcraft served notice, certified notice of this meeting as required two, I have, two weeks yes. in advance? I have no, I, I have no documentation, but I just know that he was obviously he was notified of the meeting because he's contacted me, and so, he was here. And he was here. There is a requirement for certified notification. He certainly had time to contact his attorney. That's right. He had time to contact. Mr. Chair, in regards to attorneys, that's what we're talking about. Simplifying is the plaintiff's attorney, the defendant's attorney, or the complainants and the complainee. We need to seek opinion from our counsel. They're all going to have three different opinions. Yes. And I, I, I feel that we, I, I'm sorry, but I think I, we need to talk to Goldman and Page. And that's, I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel about it before I make a decision on this. This is a lot different than Mr. Eau Claire by any stretch of the imagination. Are you afraid of him? No. Yeah. I'm hoping to get a picture with up on the side. I hope my name hits the side so I can get a picture. That's what I'm hoping for. Only the man at the end of the table. And he's the one that brought this situation to light. Mr. Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Not Mr. I didn't mean Mr. Snyder. I met the white haired gentleman and I don't know his name. Forever known as the white haired <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called me Cotton Top once. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't particularly like it. Is that why you wear the hat all the time? So. Yeah. You seem to be using your brain. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, point of information. You were on the zoning bylaw, the zoning board of appeals that granted Mr. Holcraft both his permit and the extension back then, were you not? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I think we Stand need up and be calm. All right, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need, there's two pieces to this. That I can respect your uh, your need for clarification for what, and, and, and I get that. The reality is, however, that Nick has already begun, as I understand it, that you're going to file today, if not tomorrow, 
the, the fine process. He's been <coughs> being fined right now. He's being fined right now. So we've got two separate things that are going on. And this, Mr. Snyder, this motion doesn't alleviate him from any. And that's where I'm going to go because there's going to be some pretty angry people leaving this room tonight yeah. if we don't have a, a real set process of what we're going to go, go and do moving forward. It is my position that Mr. Bracken supported me with, and I understand, and to, to your motion, that in fact, the permit for the operation, and you didn't hear the word sign, the operation at 6 South Maple, 17 High Street, <laughs> expired in 2003. There were some caveats that you were allowed in 2005, but at the end of 2005, he had no right further to exist. If you wish to go talk to Jeff Blake and have him decide whether there's an extension or whatever there is, fine, we can do that. What I think is important tonight is that we take the opportunity through the ticketing process, and I would thank Gary, please advise as, as far as what's going on here, that he's already 425 bucks in, in, the, in the hole where he owes the town that. I mean, he owes the town lots of other dollars for lots of other things, but we'll get away from that for a moment. That what's the t time period that we take into district court or superior court? Now, Mr. Snyder, I will act on the direction of the board, the select board. I, I will go to court, I will go to East Brookfield, I will go to whatever. So, so if the select board were to vote on Tuesday, I'll go, to I'll go Wednesday. Well, after the off, yeah. So that, that may be the answer. Uh, Mr. Chairman. There was a, he's got his hand up for a long time, so. Mr. Fagner, or? One. No. Oh, Mr. Fagner, go ahead and then we'll One, one last about. comment. Uh, if you ch check in the selectman's office, in 1995, plus or minus a year, the Board of Selectmen uh, took Mr. Holcraft to court at that time for open air storage of junk and salvage material. So you might put that information that in does, with whatever you're no, asking about. Because it has to do with how Mr. Tomo, you know, what, what he can use. Well, he is, he is also being fined for his property on that one. Well, Mr. O'Connor. I think the, 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 the main confusion here uh, is that, he, that the, he is being fined for violating the specifics of the bylaw when he should be ordered to get rid of the sign. That is that, yeah. that uh, yeah. if exactly. we're fining him for a violation Unfortunately, he, this is I not about the sign. The second, no, no, no. But I, the second he principle not. uses, I think, is what he means. He, the, all of the uses at this point are in violation. And, that, and that's the question that I have and that I'm concerned with is about the special permit, whether it's run out or not necessarily right. run Mr. Thomo and his violations. But should the Nick be fining him well. for continuing the whole operation, not for the three violations, but for even continuing to operate without a permit. Mm -hmm. But by, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% not sure yes. that that permit's null and void, and that's the only question I have in my mind, is I'm not 100% by the conversation I had with the, the Blake from Cobble Minute Page this afternoon, and that's the only thing that's holding me back it's is by conversation that I had with that lawyer. I'm not sure about that either. And it, it's, yeah, it's, so it's, so it's I'm, I'm not right. opposing going to k and I think this board should have gone to k and much earlier, uh, all yeah. the way along, and we haven't seen I, that. I, I believe the zoning enforcement officer should have, myself, seek sought an opinion. I think he needs the <laughs> permission of the board of selectmen to do that. So. Uh, all I'm saying is, it, it seems to me, keep the eye on Mr. Simon's point, which is, uh, does he have any authority to operate? Not whether he's in violation of these other small parts of the of the original permit, but whether he has any right to operate anything there. And Mr. And Mr. Snyder, I'd, I'd really ask you to, to reconsider a vote to allow Mr. Thomo to file criminal charges. We might be setting the town up, up for a huge liability. You, you heard him We've state. We've been dealing with it, Steve, for yeah, 15 I, I, years. I understand, but you, you heard a man threaten a lawsuit to the town. I look forward to it. I, I know, because it comes with money. It calls a lot. If, 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 but that's what we're doing. If we seek town council's opinion, then we can move forward. I, I would recommend that we find out what KP has to say before we move forward in regards to a criminal no. complaint. Well, Mr. Chairman, just one, one point on that. Uh, once again, you you have an enforcement order 
citing violation of three conditions. There's been no appeal. The deadline, it was issued on April 8th. He was given until June 30th to comply. That's two and a half months. He hasn't complied. He's in violation of that as of July 1, July 3, and today, every day in between. So with all due respect through you to Mr. Comtois, I represent, I was city solicitor in Worcester for eight years. We were self-insured for liability. I don't see any liability whatsoever. If he didn't appeal the order, he's acknowledging that Mr. Tomo was right, at least as to the three conditions. Mr. Tomo can go to court tomorrow, next week, next month, whenever the selectmen authorize him, file an application for criminal complaint. There's no liability there. Mr. Holdcraft, frankly, is dead in the water because he didn't appeal the cease and desist order. Now, if this board, after consultation with town council, agrees with our position that the special permit has expired, then following up on Mr. Simon's motion, the whole operation has to be stopped, not just the three conditions. The whole operation has Correct. to come to a halt and everything removed, including the building. And if the sign that's up there, you're referring to the yellow sign, if the yellow sign was put up under the special permit, that's gone. If he doesn't have any other permit under the zone bylaw, if he's got no other permission, if any one of these people live in a residential neighborhood, a commercial neighborhood, if they have to get a permit to put up a sign, if he doesn't have a permit for the sign otherwise, I would suggest the yellow sign would have to be removed. So, and I'm not even worried about it. And, and this is why we're at this juncture, so we need to, I, I am not voting on this until I speak to Colbert well, and Page. Well, and as much as you, you go through this whole line, I'm not going to vote on anything until after I speak with Colbert and Page. Well, well, can, can we put a, a friendly amendment to the motion that we set a time frame to this? Oh, absolutely. What, what is, what's the limitation for, because we'd have to re, re-advertise another meeting. No, you don't, Mr. Chairman. We you don't. just have to continue. continue. Okay. As long as you've, as long as you've re-advertised for tonight, if you continue to a future date, there's no need for new advertisement, no re need for new notice to a butters or anything else. It's two weeks from I'm, tonight. I'm two thinking two weeks is the best. So two weeks from tonight, friendly amendment. To reconvene with town council's opinion. But in the meantime, <laughs> so I have a question for Steve. Um, since you mentioned that the yellow sign wasn't really the pertinent issue tonight, when did he get the um, permit for the sign? And so I'm questioning that it's on the property. Five eighteen oh five. Being used there. Eighteen feet. Why it's oh, not yeah. included. That's the, the sign, the permit was applied for on May 24th, 2005. The initial order of conditions, I think, stated a 27 foot sign. He applied for a 17 foot sign. So I believe it was in the original order of conditions, that yellow sign. The sign, he signed for charitable purposes. Well, I thought right. I saw another. Right, number seven, this time. Uncharitable? Uncharitable, <laughs> <All right. laughs> yes. Yeah. I thought I saw one there, but that that was the permit. Was the sign, um, a permit sign um, for advertising his um, reason for having his building? He's probably going to make that argument. Or was it to do what he's been doing for the last 10 years? On the chairman, on the, the permit, I don't think he had a reason put down on the permit for the sign. Yeah, there's no reason for the there's permit. No reason. What he wanted to sign this On the original special permit, it says a sign stating retail service for charitable reasons, which will conform to the town zoning bylaws. Number 10. And the town zoning bylaw for that charitable limits the sign size to 16 square feet. That's a two sided four by eight sign, which is way over 16 square feet. It also says that it has to be 10 feet from the right of way. What's, what's the width of the right so of way? As, as we go back to this again, we're going back to the whole crux of this, whether this permit still is valid, viable or not. And this all, it, at that point, this, is, this whole conversation is moved. If this, if this permit is not viable any longer, all of this goes away. But and that's ultimately what this is about. An argument can be made. I was, I was asking Charlie, there's another sign there. I thought that might have been a charitable sign. 
there might be an argument that that yellow sign was never meant to satisfy those orders of conditions, that it was just a permit that the building inspector issued. That was the uh, prior zoning enforcement officer, not the building permit. Peter. Two items. Now, the per history of Mr. Fagno, at some point the town passed a bylaw or some regulation prohibiting billboards. Donald, am I correct? Yes. Okay. That, because remember, we passed that, one of the billboards, I thought the was moved down, we didn't want to put it back up. Mm -hmm. That is a billboard. Billboard is defined as a sign on our property that advertises goods or services not on the same property. So he's in violation there, regardless of any of this. Going back to the other point of giving Cole and Page the opportunity to talk about a uh, statute of limitations. If there was a statute of limitations that applied to this, I am certain that his esteemed legal counsel would have thrown that at you the first chance they got. Yeah. And that may be so, Peter, but yep. you know, I just well, want to make sure that all our you know yep. that our T's are crossed and our I's are dotted. Well, understandable. Yeah. Um, Beth. Um, Mr. Chair, one of the things that's also included in our zoning bylaws is that there's supposed to be an annual, it, in, in absence of another type of date or time period, there's supposed to be an annual recertification of any special permits. Um, I don't know that that's true. What it looks like. So it may be something that you may want to include as part of the question of Hope and Page, is that it appears that whenever we issue a special permit, that the operator is respond. The operator is responsible for reapplying for that certification. Okay, yeah. I will check with that. There was a woman over here. Yes. So what I was hearing was that this, the the purpose of the sign, Colleen Parker, houses and okay. <laughs> for twenty seven years. What I'm hearing was that the purpose of the quote yellow sign was to promote the retail business. Is that correct? Wait, I, I'm going to answer that. We, I don't think we know. Yeah. Then who read something that number 10? But, but we don't know if that yellow sign was meant to satisfy that condition. Or if that's just something he put up. I Mr. Chairman, we come back to the basic question that was raised by a couple of your... Uh, no, I'm not done. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Um, so we know what he uses the sign for, and that's to publicly humiliate people, and I agree, to create a hostile environment. Um, and so I want to know, why isn't it being addressed? And it will be addressed if this permit is legally, really, null and void. If this special permit is null and void, that's where it's going to go. Well, but we need to have legal counsel. We have to ask the question if the yellow sign is part of it. Part of it. Yeah. Because we've, we've had several conversations with KP, and we got, as a selectman, I've had them, that, that it's his freedom of speech to put whatever, whatever he wants on there. And we couldn't touch him. Well, Mr. We've, Chairman, we've had several opinions on that. If I can just restate the underlying question, though, has been raised by a couple of your citizens, is what authority does he have? If he's not putting up the sign in conformance with the allowance under the special permit, as was noted, it says, conform to the town zoning bylaws. So if that's four by four, 16 square feet, well then it's, that's the limit. If he has it, not doing it under the special permit, what authority does he have to have the sign on the property if you've adopted a bylaw that prohibits billboards? If there's no authority, then frankly, he's not grandfathered in any respect. The special, if the special permit is expired, and there's no permit for the yellow sign. The yellow sign should be ordered off the property. Well, there, there is a building permit for the yellow sign. Well, Mr. Chairman, number one, if you look at the building permit for the, the sign, it says um, area or volume, 4 by 8, 32 square feet. My understanding is the existing fine sign is larger than that. Um, well, and so, and the question is whether or not that sign conforms. That's, that's a that's a separate. Oh, it does say four by eight. Yeah, but yeah. Then it says three three hundred twenty five square feet. Which and is let's see the let's see thirty two three twenty five or thirty two yeah. square feet. Um, that being the case, then if he doesn't have a permit other than this for the sign, and that sign is larger than this sign, so, so number the one, the sign would be in violation of the special permit requirements and the building permit for the sign. Well, the question lies in the fact that the building inspector signed off on it and the zoning enforcement signed off on it. So we'd have to ask KMP what, what we can do about that as well. Everybody signed the paper. Just make sure. 
Still got it all yet. This is Jim. One second. We say in six PM for two weeks from tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I, I would request that somebody look at the setback requirement that's also in the original permit that says ten feet from the right of way. I believe the sign is within that dimension. setback would be something up from the zoning it's not on we, here we have an issue with the fact that there was a signed building permit right and does this fall under the special permit right. yeah. yep permit just a logistic issue who is going to go to see Coleman and Page? who's going to talk about I am going to talk with Colton and Page. Well, okay. via emails and and okay, uh, so you will letters. get something in writing. Yes. Can can counsel, Mr. Oh, he'll he'll can receive it. Yes. Oh, yes. Before, before the meeting. Well, we ask. Yeah. So we'll be prepared. Providing that Colton and Page steps up the plate and does what they're supposed to do. Yes. I mean, I have not, but they have two weeks at that point. I have no doubt, Mr. Blake will take care of it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have to ask, uh, Solicitor Brackett, is that the proper title? Attorney Brackett. Yes. Attorney. Yes. In your opinion, given that, uh, acknowledging that you're um, representing one of the interested parties, does a sign building permit, in your experience, supersede a zoning bylaw? No, the building inspector has no authority to issue a building permit for a sign that does not conform to your bylaw. And if your bylaw requires a special permit for a sign, in certain zones, if your bylaw requires a variance, dimensional variance for a sign larger than otherwise allowed, then you have to get zoning relief. And only when the zoning relief is granted and the appeal period runs, then the building inspector could issue. But the building permit cannot supersede the zoning bylaw requirements. Thank you. Yes. I wanted to ask you, uh, I, um, I see you're being very cautious, which is um, good, and I respect your decision to uh, want to do that. I think it's a good thing. But I also wonder about the continuance. Do we uh, need permission from the person appealing, uh, asking for this um, um, to allow us to continue? Or do we no, we have the right to continue the meeting. So we don't lose any power or authority no, by no. continuing we have the meeting legal right in, to in this sort of way. Correct. Okay, good. So we're still on. Yes. Yeah. Clarence? So on, on that point, you're moving forward to get clarifications. Clarifications from Coleman and Page. So two weeks from today, we'll be here at 6 o'clock. Sounds like a plan. Two weeks? Mm -hmm. Page two. That there's a select of the meeting on Tuesday evening. And it, it's my opinion that, that now that I understand that it really is a decision of the board of selectmen to take the further action to district court, I would be uh, conferring with the, the remainder of the board as to taking that action based on the earlier cease and desist. That's, that's fine. Just so we're clear. And, and further, clear that I was rep representing myself and I was not representing the board of selectmen this evening, just so it's all clear to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Representing us. Mar Marlene had a question. <laughs> oh. Yes. Well, and you're representing us. Thank you, Mark. I have two questions. In two weeks, the meeting will re reconvene at what time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah. Yes. And when and how will Mr. Holcroft be on the I'm really not sure. Through you, the chair. I will call and contact him. Okay. Yes. I will contact right. him. In writing. In writing. Yes. Absolutely. In writing. Certified now. Have you voted? No. Not yet. <laughs> Can we all point? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I made the suggestion that you send this certified return receipt mail because he can say he never got it yet. Oh, yes. Yep. 
Oops. Yes, sir. I want to go one step further and have the letter like we do with eviction notices served by a constable. Because if you have a certified letter, you just don't accept it. And never, you never get it. Yeah. So you have it served by a constable who then will certify through the constable process that they hand delivered on a certain time and a certain date, then you know they got it. Whether they choose to open the letter or not remains to be seen, but at least you can get it. Because we've played this game in real estate a lot where the tenant just doesn't receive anything and doesn't accept it, mm -hmm. you have no recourse. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Uh, I'd like to make, uh, we have a roll call for the motion for us to seek um, clarifications on special permits from Cobleman Bay. Yes, aye. Yes, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, I'm just curious, uh, would you also, if I'm here with Mr. Snyder at your next meeting, would you also be asking uh, Mr. Blake to be here? Because if questions come up during the meeting, as um, I, I, to, after my conversation, if I can just finish, if questions come up during the meeting, as opposed to having to continue again to get a further opinion, that if he's present, I mean, I attend meetings for my municipal clients. I'm there to answer questions on the spot, so you can make a decision. That um, will decide what he says to me about the special permit, and then I will ask the, the uh, town fathers if we can spend the money to have him come to the meeting. Yes. I, I, I personally think it's going to be cut and dry on an opinion that we're asking yeah. for. Yeah. But that would, if, if, it's, if there's any kind of gray area, then I will ask the town fathers to... Um, Fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. 747. Yes, get the hell out of here. Thanks, But you know, if we don't do it right, it's going to be all bad. So thank you. Let's do this. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. 
Okay, so we have another meeting, Dave. Okay. okay, I'd like to open a meeting. Uh, it is 7.48. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a meeting 7 o'clock, 7.48, uh, Wednesday, July 19th in the Town Hall Banquet Room on the first floor for the purpose of hearing and considering a request from Joseph Who's lack to construct a new home at 21 West Street? This requires a variance as per square or for section six, non-conforming land uses and structures, part A, section three, and section seven, dimensionally regulation C, dimensional regulations table, because it does not meet the requirement footage. Uh, the property is located in business A district. Okay. Hello there, sir. Hi, I represent Ron, the general contractor. Okay. Um, we have a house there now. Okay. It doesn't really, um, structural, it's got some problems. We're basically removing that. We're putting another house just about in the same footprint, except it's a little bit wider than the one that's there. And that's all my documentation I gave you. So we're asking the permission to remove that house and, and, and construct a new one. And basically, it's going to be even a little bit less um, from the frontage that the existing one. There, I sent you a copy of the of um, Hara's um, site plan that he did when he bought the house, and I also sent you a copy of, of Dolby's um, septic design that shows where the new structure is going. I don't know if you received that or not. I just received it yesterday. Okay, uh, and. I have a. I also sent you a copy of the draft of the house. I have the final plans will be now. Um, no, I don't. Okay. Chuck, do you have an as bill? There will be an as bill. When, well, there's an as bill of the existing house, right. and there will be an as bill of the new house when I get it done. And you provided the, the, the as bill is, is, was done by um, Mr. Parra several years ago when, when they purchased the house. Just get my file out here. Uh, there should be a, so. so, did you consider? Do you have the as built with you? Uh, yeah, I attached it to, to my application. So, I know you have so a copy of the application. Is that yeah. what this plot plan is? Um, this is the Um, first of all, I think I should give these notices that I sent out to the abutters. Yes, we'll, need, we'll take uh, Let me give you the, I don't know if they all came back. There was nine of them, but here's the package of what I got so far. Mr. Chair, that was 21 West Main, right? Yes. You said 21 West Main. Oh, I did? No, 21 West Main. Yeah. Um, let me, this is, I did attach this. Yes. To the ah. but this is the, this was done uh, by Mr. Power when, this is the going um, of the house. Yeah, when they the purchased house. the house. Just the plot plan from the assessor's office. Yep. And, and this is um, the, the existing house. Right. Property lines. Yeah. He's, um, this is the one? Yeah. This is the, uh, yeah, this is it right here. Does it extend? Yeah, he, he owns all of the owns. It's a bigger lot. But this is where the existing yeah. house is, and then it slopes down back here, and there's some wetlands back here. That's the delineation? Yeah. So uh, he's got him 19 feet from this lot line, and I also have um, so he's in that pocket. Goldie's plan that it's going to be 23 feet of the new structure. That's the new structure? Uh, I have one. So, yeah, this is the he, he did the um, septic design. And put the new, just the footprint of the new structure uh, here. And the subjects on the back. And this, yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah. This, this, yeah, that's what we want. So you actually farther from the back? Right. You're right. not right. putting any stacks or anything over like that's this? No, there, there's a porch on the floor. Let me show you the plan. But it's still, it's still farther than, because he's, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, there's a, from there's that a, point to that right, point. Right, there's a this front coming out of the building. There's a porch, but it's all going to be, this is the front of the back, thing right yeah. there. So and then the only thing is, you see this line, this is the existing. In other words, it's going to be, this is the existing, and then this is the width of the new house. And he has 52 feet here? Yes. 
I don't have a problem with any of this. You got, did you see this? Yeah, I'm going to put the back corner of the new house right here. And, I, and like I said, and, and, you know, so it's going to be really cool what we have right here. And I will give you so a this is So this is what he's got now yeah. where it yeah. comes out. Yeah. And so we're going to gain space from here yeah. to there. Um, and it's still going to be 52 feet away so from. Is, is, right. it, is it 25 feet in that zoning area, Chuck? I think so. Yeah. Side, side. Yeah, the frontage, because it's in a um, rear a lot. Yep. It's, it's 70 feet frontage. That, yep. that, that's the, the culture. This is considered frontage here? Yeah, yeah that's what they're considered the frontage. But he's already pre existing at 19. Right. Yep. Yeah, and we're going to make it 23. Yep. Yeah, there's no water around here. No, the wetlands yep. is back here. Yeah. Yep. Let me give you it's where we would run the frogs. Yeah. Uh, it's like a farm land. This is the final plan. Basically, you can't irrigate it back in the 1800s. So I can build this. It's a vernal pool that's yeah. probably <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Well, that's that's what we're gonna probably build. 800 feet off to the southwest. I look at this house, yeah. the building that uh, he Of the house itself. And first, I first got involved. But I only want to introduce this. I walked down here and there's no fire moisture. You want to go back to the place? Would the committee like to have that for the fire? I think we already do. Okay, you do it. Well, actually, take because I gave you a boomer, but we didn't make any changes. It's still the same. So, as far as I'm concerned, you have to meet the setbacks with the as built with the building inspector and zoning enforcement agent. We just have to give the okay to for the variance. For the variance, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Yep. I, I met with the zoning officer and I met yep. with Jeff. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is why I'm here. Yeah. The key was to meeting all the setbacks, which so you can. My, my my opinion is that the town's actually gaining frontage and a, and a better structure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that was the point where it has to be. Yeah, there's some rocks. I mean, it's not falling down. Seventy five thousand yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So a lot of cost that goes into the water. I'm going That's to uh, make a motion to grant the variance as proposed. Yeah, so it's what I have. I will second that. All in favor of granting the variance as proposed? Uh, yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's another one we're going to be building, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to, as soon as the, I believe, I believe there's a 20-day uh, field here. Right, 20-day field. We're going to wait for that, and then we're going to finish. Sorry, that was my answer. That was, Michael, send you the. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll see. Tell us better, why not? Yep. Yeah. I said, let's tell us better, why not? And I will, the gentleman, we'll get an ask him once I get the foundation in. Well, that goes to the building inspector. Yeah, that'll be the building inspector. And he, I think I usually, if you want, I can drop a copy off the mic so you have it for your part. It's town, do it's that. town of Brookfield. It's only good access to it. I've done, you know, done this a lot with the CDs. I try to get everything. Yeah, we we'll do that with the process. Yeah. 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 Long after right, right. Right. Uh, this is the street. Uh, no. No, I would like to uh, make a motion to uh, find a secretary to do our shorthand and notes. Mm. No, no, I'm not. I, I think I have I have two people that are possibly involved, so is that. Well, you know, if that's yeah, no all right with. Yes. Um, we will find the budget for that. <laughs> because for what little we do, I mean, we, we don't. We always return money. Sir. Can we find the budget for yeah. or have a budget? Uh, yes. Budget? Yes. For what? For advertising and um, and secretary. <laughs> yes, it is. There is. We always return money. What are we talking mm -hmm. for? Well, it's probably going to be, I, would, I haven't got to that point, but I'm thinking it's going to be $14, $15 an hour. Okay. So can I make a motion to allow the chair to research funds and applicants for our secretary? They, they must have closed. Yeah. 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 Is he closed? Yeah. Yeah. We're all set. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Sorry. I couldn't hear down here. <laughs> so, so Charlie wants to uh, bring a secretary on board. So my, my motion was to allow the chair to research funding and applicants yes. that we can discuss at our next meeting. Yeah, it'd be nice when she wouldn't be too busy. You, you mean in two weeks from now? I mean, I'm so hot, I'm so hot too, I can really At our next meeting we can discuss it to see if we have the funds first of all and then what applicants are interested in. 
interesting. Good idea. Okay. So we had a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can vote for yourself. Sure, I. <laughs> can, we, can we adjourn now? Yes, Motion sir. Motion to adjourn, 8 o'clock. Second. Motion to adjourn, 8 o'clock. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for doing the notes.